Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is healing and feeding Gentiles. Last week, we followed Jesus as he made his longest journey into predominantly Gentile regions. Jesus walked from Galilee to modern-day Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan, sharing the good news he came to preach as he healed people. In Tyre, he met a Syrophoenician woman who begged him to cast a demon out of her daughter. His conversation with this lady revealed how tender her heart was towards God. Jesus set her daughter free without needing to be in her presence. Some of the greatest long-distance miracles Jesus performed were with Gentiles. Last week, we noted that the Roman centurion at the point of death was healed without Jesus needing to be in the presence of the sick servant. The centurion said to Jesus, just say the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus commended the centurion for his faith an understanding of how spiritual authority operates. Through faith, Jesus taught that we too can be healed of diseases and set people free from demons over great distances. We learn to release the power of God by releasing our faith over mobile phones, texting, and even messaging. Along this journey, we discovered more about how much Jesus loves and cares for Gentiles. He had walked over 50 miles to set a Syrophoenician's daughter free. What great love. We can be sure that Jesus healed more than just this one girl. Mark recorded this story because of how much it impacted him. Mark goes on to make the point that from Tyre, Jesus traveled north to Sidon. It tells us that there were more people in Lebanon that Jesus wanted to meet and to help. From Sidon, Jesus traveled over the Lebanon mountain range into the Bacar Valley to join the ancient road leading to the Gentile region known in that day as the Decapolis. In this region, 10 Roman cities formed a trading alliance that brought prosperity to the local people. Despite their prosperity, their gods were not able to protect their children from evil spirits or heal them. Mark traces Jesus' journey through the Decapolis to the western side of the Sea of Galilee by simply saying, then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis Mark chapter 7 and verse 31. After Jesus arrived in this region, Mark says they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. Mark chapter 7 and verse 32. Mark focused on the story of the deaf and mute whose friends had asked Jesus to heal him. And Jesus took him aside touched his ear and his tongue, and instantly healed him. The crowd was absolutely astonished. While Mark focused only on the deaf and mute man, Matthew tells us that a great crowd of Gentiles came to Jesus to be healed. Matthew said, great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the cripple, the mute, and many others, And they put them at his feet, and Jesus healed them. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 30. Just think about this. Lame people, blind people, crippled people, people who couldn't speak. And Matthew adds many other diseases. We don't even know what they were. And he healed them. Jesus has great power over all the diseases and sicknesses that we face. You're watching this program, and you're lame, or you're blind, or you're crippled in some kind of way using crutches. Uh, You you have a limb that is 
crooked. Uh, you, you have a limb that's missing. I just command healing for your body right now. Limbs straighten out. Missing limbs grow right now in the name of Jesus. Cancer go right now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Mute people speak right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus healed them all. And as I have prayed for you, I've released his power into your life. Matthew confirms that those who were healed were Gentiles when he says this phrase at the end of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 31. They glorified the God of Israel. They as the Gentiles glorified the God of Israel. The God of Israel was able to do what the gods of the Gentiles could not do. Many years ago, Isaiah had prophesied that people will be able to know who God's Messiah is when, Isaiah 35, verse 5 and 6, the eyes of the blind shall see and be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, then shall the lame man walk like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Uh, 700 years before Jesus, Isaiah prophesied these amazing words. This prophecy clearly shows that Jesus was God's promised Messiah, not just for Israel, but for all people. These remarkable healings took place over a period of three days while Jesus was teaching the Gentiles about the greatness of God. You will remember that a year or so before this at Bethesda in Galilee, Jesus healed and then fed over 5,000 primarily Israeli people. Now here in the Decapolis, Jesus heals, teaches, and feeds over uh, 4,000 uh, Gentiles. Uh, Matthew says, Then Jesus called his disciples and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I am unwilling to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Jesus is always unwilling to send people away from him. Anyone who comes to him, Jesus wants to bless. Now note, once again, Jesus asked the disciples about the food that was available. How many loaves do you have, they said. And they said, seven, and a few small fish, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 34. Ministry always begins with releasing to God what we already have in our hands. Uh, Jesus took the seven loaves and fish, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 36. Matthew says, they all ate and were satisfied. Matthew 15 and verse 37. One of my favorite texts of scripture, what Jesus gives us satisfies us. The bread of Jesus satisfies not only our stomachs, it heals our bodies and nourishes our spirit. Mark records Jesus saying, if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come from far away. Mark chapter 8 and verse 3. Now Jesus was referring not just to the physical distance that they had traveled, but to the spiritual journey they had taken with him in understanding the greatness of the God of the Old Testament. They had come to Jesus from the gods of the Gentiles, from Apollo, Athena, Zeus, Bacchus, Asclepius, the god of healing, and many other of the Greek and Roman gods. Jesus had introduced them to the living God who has power to save and power to heal. It's worth noting that the Decapolis cities were located on the top of mountains. This is one reason that Jesus wanted them to have physical strength for their journey back up to the mountains, back up the road they had come down. Jesus wanted the Gentiles uh, to not return to their old beliefs and powerless gods on their way home. He didn't want them to faint physically or spiritually 
from the great truths they had learned. Now, before we end our study of Jesus' longest journey into Gentile regions, I want to take us back to the man from Gadara, out of whom Jesus had cast many demons. Jesus instructed the man to tell people what great things God had done for him. Mark says, the man went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone marveled, Mark chapter 5 and verse 20. I believe that one of the reasons that so many Gentiles came to listen to Jesus teach for three days is because the man from Gadara could not stop talking about all that Jesus had done for him. When the locals heard that Jesus was in their area, they brought sick and demonized family members to him to be healed and to be set free. As you have listened to this program, it is possible that you too may have come a long way in your spiritual journey. Your understanding of who Jesus is and the great message he preached is for everyone may have changed your thinking today. Receive him today as your savior. Thank Jesus for dying for you in your place that you may have eternal life. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Now, before I leave you, let me just pray with you about some of these things again and ask God to work in your life. God, open the eyes of ones listening to me right now, precious men and women who've not heard clearly that Jesus is for all people. And today we declare this truth, open eyes to see this truth right now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus loves everyone. He wants to save everyone, and he wants everyone to be healed. And once again, if you are lame and walking on crutches, I command your leg and your hips to be healed. Oh, I just felt that in the spirit, a shift. Something's happening in somebody's hip. Uh, one of the reasons you're limping is because you have a problem in your hip. I command that problem to go right now. I think it's in the right side. Something wrong with the ball joint and the right side of your hip. Hip, be healed right now. Maybe you've been told you need a hip replacement and you know it's entirely impossible financially and you've decided, you have accepted to walk with a limp the rest of your life. Uh, hip be replaced, hip joint be replaced right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Feel a shift. Stand up and walk, and you'll see something has happened. You don't need your crutches any longer. Blind eyes open right now in Jesus' name. You have trouble speaking, you stutter, or you're mute, and in some way your speech is impaired. I command your speech to be healed and touched by Jesus right now. And whatever other diseases you're carrying that I have not prayed about or mentioned, I command those to leave your body. Cancers especially go right now. In Jesus' name, you've been caught up in the variant, the D variant of the COVID, and you thought you had escaped COVID, but it has gripped you. I command your lungs to clear and to breathe deeply. Just breathe in and let the Holy Spirit come in and fill you with his presence and cleanse your lungs. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing for people right now. We release a blessing upon you and healing power of the Holy Spirit. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.